I gave birth to twins at 26 weeks. That's very, very early. I was in this instant role of not just a mom, but a mom of two, and two who were very tiny and had all of these problems. We spent three months in the neonatal intensive care unit. One of my sons was on oxygen when he came home. Everything just spiraled out of control. Siobhan helped me through those early days. So like Laura's twins, my son was born at 26 weeks and my life completely changed. That experience made me realize I could support families the way that I needed the support. I became a parent consultant. Basically, what we do is empower families to be their own advocate. We're the family support, helping them navigate community resources, advocating for them, and giving them the tools and educating them to be an integral part of their child's care team. But most of all, we listen. Sometimes the parents need someone who has been there who can say, let me listen to what your needs are. My son, Tuanik, suffered a brain injury at birth that has left him with severe physical and mental disabilities. I was completely overwhelmed, and the staff uh, referred me to a parent consultant who has a son with cerebral palsy. When she first called, all I did was cry. It was just a huge emotional support to have somebody who's been there to understand where you're coming from. Finally, she said, how about I set you up with a support group? I can say in hindsight, her knowledge of where I was at emotionally, her patience and persistence in getting me into a support group went a long way to help me accept what I had to deal with. In 2007, we were fortunate to add Amy, a parent consultant, to our staff. Now, what has been most surprising to me is that parents will share certain information with another parent that they're somewhat reluctant to share with a professional. In one instance, a child was having some breathing problems. It was the middle of a cold winter. The physician said to the parent, why don't you take the child initially into the bathroom, turn on the shower, turn on some real hot water, and sit in the steam for 10 to 15 minutes with the baby to see if he improves. And the parent said, okay. Then the parent consultant came in, and the parent then told her, our hot water was turned off a couple of months ago. We haven't had hot water for a long time. Well, the parent consultant submitted a request immediately to the utility company, got the physician's signature, got the gas and hot water turned on. A successful story. Actually, it's been uh, quite a learning experience for our team. During team meetings every other week, Amy will bring up any family circumstances that might impact care, or she might call our attention to a new resource in the community that we can all use. Now we're looking at the whole picture of caring for a family. I'll have to say we've decreased the rehospitalization rate in the first four months after discharge from the NICU, the most vulnerable time for these babies. Our families really trust Amy. It would be wonderful if every practice could have a parent consultant. We started PPEP because there was a disconnect between where people were going for help and where services were available. A lot of families were asking their physician for help with equipment or housing or education or other community programs, and there were a few physicians who were committed to this population who felt disconnected from the larger system of care. So we met with our partners and started a pilot in eight sites. We put trained parents of kids with special health care needs in physicians' offices to link families to resources and services. Today we have parent consultants in 24 sites. They've served about 4,200 families over five years. It's been very successful. Families feel more confident taking charge of their children's care, and we've heard from doctors that for the first time they can ask, is there anything else I can do for you, without being afraid of the answer. It's also proven cost effective, since kids participating in the PPEP use inpatient and emergency services less as their care is coordinated.
For a state leader, the PPEP provides a way to hear how programs are impacting the community and how you can improve upon them. Having a direct feedback loop from families ensures that your state is meeting the Title V mandate of making it easier for families to access services. The program really tries to address barriers for families, making it easier for families to connect, making it easier for families to have the right um, and appropriate and adequate level of care that they need. PPEP has proven to be an effective model for delivering a patient-centered medical home for children with special health care needs, something that will become increasingly important as we implement health reform. If it were not for the parent consultants, I honestly do not think I would have gotten through this experience. My kids would not be doing as well as they are.